Now I've come out to Canterbury Caravans in Bayswater, North Victoria because I'm going to get my own personal camper serviced. I've come here because I know them, I trust them and I'm confident they're going to do a really good job. Can you tell me what is it that you're actually going to be doing to my camper for this service? So Max, it's a 10,000 kilometre service which is your annual service which entails a full chassis check and suspension, wheel bearings, brakes, tyres, your running lights, stabiliser legs and your coupling, and full safety features of the van so you can have a, a whole lot of confidence in touring or heading off on holiday. Now I know you wouldn't normally allow this but uh, any chance I can look over your shoulder a little bit while we do this? I think we can allow that for that. Okay. We, uh, not only do we do services, we do full modification repairs, insurance repairs uh, for hail damage, accidents, uh, road accidents. And we also do a lot of warranty work for AWN mm. and other associations like that. The first step of the service is we safely jack the caravan up uh, off the ground to free the wheels. And then we'll do a light check, a, a trailer plug check for the lights and for the brakes. That way we can ascertain if there's a problem before we start. Next stage is we remove the wheels, inspect the tyres, remove the hubs and begin cleaning and checking the bearings and the internal parts of the uh, braking mechanism. After that, it's pretty much reassembly, tensioning everything up uh, according to specs, uh, and then we begin to lubricate the suspension, your stabiliser legs, your coupling, and uh, providing we haven't found anything wrong, that essentially will be the service. Well, I have looked after this camper. It is my pride and joy. I'm trusting you with it. Thank you. I'll let you get to work. OK, let's do it. So when it comes to jacking up the van, I mean, is there anything important here in terms of not damaging the chassis? For us, there, there is, especially <clears throat> on high vans, uh, you need to have the right equipment so that you don't drop a van. Vans are getting higher as they become more off-road. And on the longer vans, jacking it up at the right point, not to stress out the chassis. So they're the main concerns we have, safety and protecting the van. Sure. This is our standard test box to test the caravan running lights and the electric brakes and any auxiliary 12 volt things that need to run off. First of all, we'll just make sure that none of the pins are broken, especially the other ones. They get a little bit pinched together like that one. I'll just get a little knife. Yeah. I don't overdo it. Yep. Because you can snap it, suddenly you need a new 12 pin plate. Just to, you know, if I see anything that's too pinched together, I'll just sort of get my knife in there, open it up a bit. When you push the this plug into the socket on your car, it grabs a hold of a bit. There's no damage. Um, we'll plug that into the test box and uh, we'll start with your indicator. Sometimes I have someone back here. Well, we'll just start with that left. Yep. So left indicator is working. Max, if you want to turn that one off and flick the right hand one on. Okay, right hand is on. Right hand indicator is on. So flick that off. Now the brakes is important. And we'll also do a quick check to make sure lenses aren't cracked or that LEDs aren't blown and that the light isn't faulty. In this case, they're all working perfectly. So before we remove the wheels is your, are your electric brakes. Mm -hmm. So we want to know, so we turn them on. Uh, already the amp drawer is 8.6. Most magnets draw between 3.7 to 4. So that would indicate both are working pretty well. Okay. But we'll just do a quick kick of the wheel to make sure that it locks on. And it does. Wheel stops soon. That shows that the electric brake mechanism is working on the wheels. Turn it off and that should release it, which it does. It's turning perfectly. Another thing we'll quickly check up here are uh, your chains. Make sure all the links, uh, no gouges or, or anything worn from dragging on the ground. And uh, all that's looking great. Some caravans have a brake safe mechanism. Mm -hmm. um, we will pull the pin on that and test it. Yours doesn't because it's a smaller van. Uh, everything looks great. Fantastic. So we're ready to start the service. So the first thing the service guy will check, just to make sure there's no real obvious damage to the tyre, haven't hit a rock or split it, and that you haven't had a problem in the past with loose wheel nuts and flogged out the holes, it's just the safety, that the rim's not obviously cracked. And we'll also check on uh, a lot of vans, the date of the tyre. So after eight years, we recommend a customer upgrade their tyres to new tyres. And I'm just looking for the, so this one's 25-15, so that's the 25th week of 2015, this tyre was manufactured. So you still got a good couple of years before this tyre would be deemed uh, too, too old. And the rims still look okay? Rims look great, yes. 
So first thing we're doing is uh, removing the dust cap uh, to access the axle nut. Yep, so next we remove the, uh, the split pin that holds the castle nut on and the whole time we're just making sure that we're observing that everything was done right the last time it was serviced. Then we remove the uh, castle nut and just the service person will be aware just to make sure it wasn't over tension. That wasn't over tension, it's done perfect. But just will help us, especially if there's a bearing that's worn. There's a, a washer as well as the outer bearing. And then you can remove the hub. Visual inspection now, um, just to make sure everything was in good order before we start uh, cleaning. Um, so the brake shoes are looking fairly good. The magnet's on, um, no obvious wear. You can still see the wear uh, indicators are all showing that the magnet's not too worn. And uh, we'll also check to make sure there's no cracks in the linings of the shoes. Uh, it's typical that there'll be dust, as is normal, and to make sure that the grease hasn't gone through the seal and coated the brake mechanism with grease. Um, that may then indicate that we need to replace the brake shoes if that grease is embedded. Everything looks great, nothing wrong. So we will go ahead and clean the bearings and clean the, uh, the backing plate and brake mechanism. So the next stage now, the service uh, person will carry this over to the wash bay and begin uh, degreasing the bearings and the hub and then repacking with new grease uh, ready for installation. So once we've cleaned off the grease, the service person will check to make sure that there's nothing burned or worn or scratches or gouges. Uh, there's sometimes a slight burn on the inside, that's normal, nothing too excessive, that's okay. This bearing, the uh, outer bearing's looking great. And the inner bearing is looking fantastic too, nothing wrong there. So essentially we would not change the bearings on this hub unless the customer asks us to. So once we wash the grease off, get all the excess grease off, we then uh, go to the wash bay and uh, give them a good a good wash. A number of ways you can do this. Some people do it uh, with a kerosene. We use a parts cleaner. So obviously the main thing when you're doing the service is to keep everything as dust free and grime free as you can. So obviously another thing we've got to do is clean the grease out of the uh, all the old grease out of the hub and that way you can also check the uh, the, ra the races and uh, we also check the brake surface and the electric and the magnet surface so just using parts cleaner keeps everything wet cleans off the grease and uh, you come up with a nice looking hub when you're done and it surface no gouges or ruts so no need to machine those down and the, where the brake linings go that's also in very good condition, so everything's wearing normally and there's no issue with this hub. So now we can go ahead and repack the bearings with clean grease and uh, reassemble the hub. We won't be replacing it with the rubber ones, which are problematic putting in. We actually have the, the steel ones. Um, it's arguable which ones are better, they're about the same, but these are easier to install. So reassembled. There's various ways to repack a bearing with grease. But here we currently use this method, which is like a like a bearing uh, plunger style system, a bit like French press coffee. And as you can see, the bearings pushed up through the bearing uh, rollers right out through there. So we just make sure it's nice and coated. That's ready to go. And then we also need to put a bit of grease inside the hub before we before we do it. Jury's out on how much grease uh, really needs to be inside a hub. Uh, hub manufacturers claim it needs very little, but the majority of service people like to put a bit more than what the, is recommended. You don't want to overdo it, but you do need to have a bit of grease in there.
Already I can hear the complaint saying <laughs> too much or too little. So like I said, the jury's out. Just make sure everything's nice and coated at least. I just make, like to make sure that every surface has got grease on it before I put it in there, just to lessen any chance of uh, premature wear. So you set the bearing in there. Once you've got the inner bearing in, you can then set the uh, seal in place. Bang the bearing in as flat as possible. Make sure it's sitting in there flush. And then we just uh, clean off any excess grease. We don't want that grease going into onto the brakes. We need to pack the outer bearing. Again, just making sure the outer bearing is nice and uh, coated. Grease has gone all the way through it, no problem. We'll go back over and clean, uh, go through the uh, backing plate and brake mechanism clean. Let's get all the excess grease off. And pretty much the way we clean it, it's pretty much just soak it with parts cleaner. We no longer use com uh, compressed air to do this because of the danger with the brake dust. So just lots of parts cleaner, keeps the dust down, the rags catching all the, all that. And then we just give it a quick, quick wipe down. Make sure there's no grease anywhere. Make sure the uh, mechanism's working. Um, how much life do you think's left in those brake pads? Oh, that's a good question. So on our service sheet, uh, we have one of the uh, requirements of the service person is to gauge uh, roughly what they feel the life of the, the, the brake pads have left in them. So here you'd safely say they're around 50 50%? Okay. Yeah. Uh, sometimes one pad will be a little bit more worn than the other, as in this case, possibly the rear one uh, slightly more worn, but you say as an average there would be 50% left uh, life. So we jot that down on the service sheet, the customer gets a copy. Look, for the most part, these are in pretty good nick. It might be that the next service, this side might develop cracks. So everything's ready to go. Um, we've repacked the bearings. Installed the seal, we've got grease on the axle. Careful not to pinch that seal when you put it on. Once the hub's on, then install the outer bearing. Axle nut or your castle nut. Um, so we, we tension up that nut fairly much until the hub stops turning or as tight as it'll go. And then the important thing is to back it off until it's loose and then just bring it back to the closest without over tightening it. That there's going to be perfect. And then uh, another crucial thing is the split pin. This essentially stops that nut from uh, turning loose and uh, coming off the van. So again, real critical point in the service. So we've bent that pin in there, so it's no possible way that it can fall out. Just making sure everything's turning right and no undue noise. And then we uh, put on the dust cap. Um, next stage, uh, is we will grease uh, the suspension. It's a visual check. Make sure the shock absorbers are, uh, are nice and the bushes aren't worn. Um, make sure there's no cracks or loose bolts and there's uh, a couple of grease points that we need to uh, grease. So we'll grease those before we put the wheel on. So far, so good. Um, what's next, Andrew? So right now, we just do a real quick check of your suspension. It's an off-road suspension, independent suspension. So there's a couple of moving components. So we've checked your shock absorbers, make sure they're not worn. Uh, make sure there's no obvious cracks, uh, that nothing's loose. 
Um, and once we've done that, if we're still a bit concerned, we may grab our lever and start uh, just levering a few of the points where the, the, where the suspension is mounted, just to make sure there's no movement. Could indicate a worn bush. Another thing we do when we remove the tyre, just check to make sure there's no abnormal wear. Yours are great. No cupping, no internal or external wear to show any sort of problems with camber or towing. So it looks like everything's working great. So essentially, once we've ascertained that the suspension is in good nick, we just do a quick grease mm -hmm. and uh, ready to put the wheel back on. Terrific. This is just the standard uh, brake adjustment where we adjust the, the brake shoes out onto the hub until the wheel stops spinning and then back it off until it's just free and that's the, the standard uh, brake adjustment. Nothing untowards, no pipes hanging down, nothing loose or damaged. Just where the A-frame joins on, um, again, potential point where things can crack or break. Um, and again, it's just a quick check and uh, nothing untoward, it all looks great. And uh, yeah, that's simply a real quick check that we do just to uh, ensure nothing's damaged or, or broken. Finish off the service. We will uh, quickly lubricate all the stabiliser legs. Um, just the main mechanisms. So nice and, there. and also, just a little bit of spray on the jockey wheel. Uh, around the coupling. Just any moving part, just a little bit of a lubricant. Oh, so that's it? That's pretty much it. Um, obviously, if there was damage or something wrong, uh, the service would take longer. But in your case, it's just a standard service. Everything's good. It's because I look after it. That's it. <laughs> a good owner. Uh, so there's no issues with your van. So generally, a single axle service is about two hours, two and a half hours, um, providing there's no extra issues that we've got to take care of. No crack chassis, no brake pad replacements. All your lights and, working, yeah. electric brakes are working, your handbrake's good, everything's adjusted, everything's been checked, so you've got a lot of confidence to head off on your trip. Thank you very much. No problem. <laughs> all right, well, I'm all hitched up. Hey, Andrew. There you go. What have you got here? So, Max, this is your bill, um, but uh, once the customer's hooked up, they paid their, uh, their service fee, uh, we give them the paperwork, attached to the invoice, which pretty much outlays all the work that was done on the service, um, your tyre pressures, uh, the numbers of the bearings and seals for future reference, yep. and you keep that as a record. And, and, and uh, honestly, that's really very fair too. All right, yeah. I'm going to get out of your hair. Okay, it's good to see you. Take care, safe travels. Thanks very much.